good mo uh, morning, afternoon, good Sunday to whoever happened to be watching. Today we're going to do a little video on making an owl pot. This little fella could be a pencil pot, it could be a plant pot, uh, it could be a little pot for succulents, whatever you want it to be. So now we've got making this. The first thing we're going to do is I've got a lump of clay here. I've weighed this out. There's about a pound of clay here. Uh, it's about just under 500 grams for those of us in metric. And what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to cut this in half like that. Then I'm going to get one half into my left hand. I'm right-handed, so I put it into your non-dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, put it in your left hand. If you're left-handed, put it in your right hand. Get my thumb, push it in quite firmly. So I sort of feel my thumb pressing against my hand. And then keep my thumb still. I drag my fingers up. And I turn the clay, drag the fingers up. So I'm doing that sort of motion all the way around. And then when I've gone all the way around once, then I've got to go around again and just make it the same thickness everywhere. So I smooth it out, pinch it out, all the way around. same thickness everywhere. Once I've made half a cup like that, that's one side. I'll do the same with the other half. Pinch it out, push it up, all the way around. And then pinch it all the way around. So this is why they call it a pinch pot. You start off with stretching the clay up and then you pinch it out. But if you pinch it out to start with, you tend to end up with the whole thing flopping out. So it's an idea to sort of get the basic form first by doing that stretching motion and then pinch it out from there. So I want the clay about half a centimetre thick everywhere. You don't want it too thin, you don't want it too thick. You want it even. I'll just check it's all there. Get this one over. And what we're going to do is I'm going to get my knife. So I've got a few tools here. I'm just going to work with a knife and just, this could be a lollipop stick. This could be a proper pottery tool. This is actually one that I bought from uh, one of our local hardware stores. There's a set of clay modeling tools for FIMO or something like that. Which just fine. So I get my knife. Again, although I'm using a pottery knife, it doesn't have to be a pottery knife. My wife tends to use our kitchen knife which would be all very well, except clay really blunts knives. So when I go to peel the vegetables, I have to sharpen the knife first. So go around like that, and then I'm going to get some clay and water. I'll slip, and I'm going to put, paint that all the way around here, into that surface there. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to rough it up like that, all the way around. I don't need to put slip on this one because I've already got slip on here. So I put them together. And this is where we have to manipulate a little. So this one needs to be stretched out a little bit more that way. And we tuck them together. Now they never go together perfectly. It's almost impossible. But that's okay as long as they're close enough. And then you can just push and fold to get the edges to meet. Once we've done that, I'm going to get a little bit of clay. Roll it up in my hands to start with, make a worm, and then roll it to make it thinner because this is going to secure our two sides together. Again, it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly round, we're going to work it in eventually. I'll put some slip over the, the join, lay that over the top. So you see, it's not long enough to go round, so I'm going to put that piece on and then do another piece. It doesn't matter if it's not long enough, it doesn't matter if it's too short too long you just cut it off if it's too long you just make a bit more if it's too short it doesn't have to be perfect i'm going to put some slip on that bit there lay that around like that okay so i've now got sort of like a, a spot nick type thing what i'm now going to do is join the two sides together using my tool here so i'm going to push the clay down onto one side of the one pot and then push it down onto the other. So always going across the join, don't go along the join or it won't actually fix it. So we've got to go all the way around, pushing it up and down.
So it's a technique that I've used on a few of my videos. So you might be thinking, oh yeah, I've done this before. Because a lot of the pieces I make start off with a ball. And this one is no exception. Go all the way around, joining it. Then I get it in my hand, smooth out the biggest lumps, adjust my thumb, and turn it into a potato. If I've got too much clay, just take it off. And then, to make it into a ball, what I can do is just start with, I'm just going to pat it and shape it. Put my board, roll out the worst of the, the lumps and bumps. And then to get it round, properly round, because we want a nice round base for this, I'm going to use a bowl. So what I do is I can get in the bowl. The bigger the bowl, the better. But if you've only got cereal bowls, that's also fine. Anything with a nice curve is what you're aiming for. Because what you're going to do is you're going to press the bowl, ball of clay into those, into that curved surface, and it starts to take on a curved finish. holes in it you need to fill in because it's pushing it around isn't working put a bit of slip on it put a bit of clay in work it in okay, back to the bowl and keep working it on the bowl until you get it to the right shape easier to roll now so I know I'm getting closer to the finished article. Now each time I do it it's coming more and more ball like. So I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit more with my fingers. Again put a big hole there so a little bit more clay in there. Smooth it all in. It's worth taking your time with this bit because this is going to make a nice bottom to your pot. If you've got a uh, smoothing tool like a kidney, now's a good time to use it. But you can do just as well with your fingers if you know good with a kidney. Some people find a kidney really difficult to use. Just fill in all these marks. If you find your clay starting to crack, mine isn't yet, thankfully. But if you do, put your finger a little bit of slip and work the slip into the clay just to soften up that bit that's cracking. Same with working with clay. If your hands, if you've got particularly hot hands, of course it dries out the clay very, very fast. And if you're nervous when you're working with the clay, of course that also gets your hands hot, which means you get a similar problem. So let's give it another roll. Okay, each time it's coming better and better. Something that's ideal for rolling in is if, is if you've got one, is a nice big mixing bowl. That's good too. As long as you're not going to offend the cook of the house too much by using their mixing bowl for rolling out your, your ball. So again, there we go. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that now. So we've got a ball. That's going to be the base of our owl. Next thing to do then is look at it and decide which is going to be the bottom, which is going to be the top. Well, mine has actually got, because of the shape of the bowl, it's gone very slightly wider at the top than at the bottom. So that's going to be the base. So to make sure my owl now doesn't go anywhere, I'm going to bounce him on there just to make him flat. Okay. Now, let's put that ball to one side for a moment. Because now we need to make the top. So we've made the base part. Now we're going to make that bit there. So I've previously rolled out a piece of clay. Like that. And I'm going to cut a strip of it. So what I'm going to do, I've got my guide sticks, these are what I use for rolling out to make sure they're the right thickness. These are about six centimetres, six millimetres, sorry, thick. Um, so I'm going to use one of these to cut 
to strip it straight. So just cut that piece off there. And then I want a piece of right too high. I've made for this one I feel I've made him a little bit high. So this one might be slightly smaller. I don't know. Let's uh, go for that. Oops. Cat, cat hair. Let's get the cat hair out of there. Okay, so lining it up to try and make sure that's straight. I'm then going to cut another piece out of that. And put that to one side. I need it again later to make the eyes. Get our ball back. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to put this around the top of my ball. So I'm going to measure it. Let's neaten it off at the end. end. So I'm going to put it so it's going to go there. So this is just measuring it to make sure it's the right size. So it's going to go around. So it's going to be sitting on the top like that. Okay. And then when I'm happy with it, yep, no, see that. with it and gently press those two pieces together take it off and now I'm going to cut it and what I want to do is to cut it at an angle so I want to cut it at like a 45 degree angle all the way from the top to the bottom let's do that here and we'll take the surplus pieces off and what we now have is a very neat cut that will go together. Cat's hair's everywhere today. Get that out of the way. So let's score that. Get some slip on it. Score the other side, just to be on the safe side. And then we put those two together. Nice and neat like that. Now to make sure that stays together we've got to join it so we get another little worm and if you're not very good at worms just do them between your hands it's sometimes a good way of doing them and this little worm is going to go down that crack there so i paint a little bit more slip on it like that put the worm in there like that and then rest it on here so i've got something to push against and then i'm gonna again like i did with the body the lower part of the body i'm gonna smooth it across the crack up one side up the other And then you don't need to necessarily put a coil on the outside unless you've got too big of a hole there, in which case you can possibly put a little bit of clay in there just to smooth it out. But as long as you've joined it properly on the inside, you can get away with it. So I am going to put just a tiny bit more clay in there. Go by like that. And then support it on the inside. And smooth that clay in. So you see this clay here is just cosmetic, so it doesn't matter if it's not spread both sides like we would normally do with the join. Right, we're now ready to attach that onto the top of our ball. So, the side which is the neatest part, let's have a look at it, which is going to be the neatest bit for the top. Uh, that bit actually, we'll go with that side. So that's going to be the top of the pot. So we turn it upside down, and we're going to score all the way around. One of my favourite toys at the moment, tools at the moment, sorry, not toys, is a mini scoring tool, which is fabulous, but I won't use that here because obviously you lot won't have one. So. Then we position that on the top of the ball. Okay. Now, having got that on, probably still as high as I was before, but never mind. So we've now got that sort of situation. What we're going to do next is we're actually going to cut out the top of the ball. Look at this. Can I get in here? I don't want to cut it up flush with the piece we just put on. So get that out without dropping it into the bottom. Okay, there we go. 
So I've left a little bit of clay all the way around the inside so that I can use that to join the base to the top. So what I now do is I now spread that clay up onto the inside of this piece I've just added. All the way around. I think our neighbours have gone out and left their dog outside to make a very annoying noise. All the way around and join it. And then, worth spending a little bit of time, I'm not going to spend much time on this because it's a demonstration, but it's worth spending a bit of time then. Get your hands in, smoothing everything down, make a really good tight join. Then, on the outside, you go around, and I'm just going to wet my finger off a little bit because it's a little dry, and just work that slab into the pinch pot below. Again, you might want to add a little coil of clay in there just to make it a slightly smoother transition. It doesn't need to be a big piece because the piece inside is going to do the job of holding it. But just to give you a little bit more to work with. in the background here, glazing cows, her usual Sunday occupation. Hello. <laughs> On October day, it's actually really quite nice. We've got the door open, which is why you can hear that annoying dog. And the sun is shining. Washing's on the line. Ooh, my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one last little bit and fill in that bit there. So now we have our basic round bottomed pot. So now to turn it into an owl. So the first thing we need is some ice. So I kept these pieces of clay here. Now you need to find something to cut round. If you're lucky, you might have um, cutters, cookie cutters, little cookie cutters. Um, I found a pot that should be about the right size to make the ice. So I'm going to use the top of that to cut round. So there's all sorts of things around the house that you can use. Your kitchen is a mine of stuff you can make for pottery. Bottom of a spice jar might be the right size. Something like that. So I now have two ice. I'm just going to smooth them down a bit before I go any further. Again, I want a little bit of water. So just a little bit. I don't again, you don't want to get things too wet. So just enough just to smooth the edges down, make it look a little tidier. Okay, so that's one eye done. Smooth down another eye. If your hands are dirty, you, you find you just keep you're making it rougher because you're just rubbing the clay that's on your hands, the dry clay, into the wet clay and it's, it doesn't work. So wash your fingers regularly when you're working with clay. pop back. So it's going to be the front. I think we'll have the front there. It looks like the tidiest bit. So these are going to go one, two. These are a bit bigger than my other owls but that's okay. Then straight back. Mainly the middle because I'm not going to attach it all the way around. I'm only going to attach the middle bit. So put some clay on it. Put it in place. So I'm going to have this one a little lower. So I wanted it a little lower than the top, just about where the belly, the curved bit meets the straight bit. 
and I'm going to press it in. Put my fingers behind, so I'll just make a little indent so it's secured just at that point. Okay, and I'm going to do the same with the other eye. Now, of course, you can make your owls as weird as you like, so you don't have to have the eyes level, but I am going to have my eyes level. So I'm just going to look it in there, make sure they're in the same place. And again, press it there. And I'm going to give him some eyeballs. So I've got a ball of clay. Roll it into a round ball. Cut the ball in half. Try to make sure they're both about the same size. Roll them again. One, two. I haven't decided where the right size to go in there. I think that'll work. Got some nice big owls, owl eyes. Then I'll scrape the back. Slip on them. Put them in place. And this time, I'm not sure it's in the right place, you wiggle them, so you twist them around like that until they stick fast. So that's one eye. Same with the other eye. Scrape it, spot slip. Put it on. Wiggle it till it fits. It doesn't move. Next we're going to give them a beak. So back to my lots of clay here that I had earlier. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut a diamond shape out of those. So we have a point, wind, like that. And then we have a point at the other end but a smaller point. So it's going to be a bit more like that. And that's going to fit in there between the eyes. So scrape it again all over this time. Let it slip. Put it in position between the eyes. And again give it a wiggle until it stops moving. Stay put. Okay. Right, so our owl has a beak and two eyes. It's a good start. Uh, next we're going to give it some feet. So, get a lump of clay, let's move them out of the way for a moment, roll it into a ball, and then put it onto the lump, like that, which we're then cut in half. I don't know what's happening here in Western Supermarines in England today, but um, we've got the fire engines and the police and everything are out today. Unfortunate thing about the site of our studio is we are right on the route from the fire from the fire station, so we hear the fire engines a lot. Okay, so I'm making them into two little lumps like that, slightly curved. And they're gonna go one, two, at the bottom of the pot. So I'm gonna scrape them. So slip on. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to position it, but not stick it. And then I'm going to turn my pot upside down so I can see the mark where I put it. And then I put that in position there and add some clay underneath. Coil again underneath to make sure it stays put. Like that. Sides, put my tool again, screw it onto the base of the pot. That and then up onto the foot. Like that. Okay, hopefully you can see. So that's more secured with a coil of clay. Put it back down a moment. Make sure his foot's in position. Then we get foot number two. Do the same thing again. Score it. Nice blob of slip on it. Put it where we want it. So let me just turn him around so I can see him. That's going to go there. Again, turn it upside down, a piece of clay into the into there, like so, okay, send it in, and, oh, 
Can you stay put? Okay, now your right foot's going to stay put. Way again. And to make sure that he looks a bit like a foot, what I'm now going to do is I'm actually going to use this tool again. Let me just tidy up under there. And mark his toes off. Like that. And to make them look a little bit more interesting, a bit like we did on the pumpkin, I'm just going to shape that. So I'm going to pinch that in like that. And on the other side, just going to make them sort of bulgy. That bit more like toes. Let's cut that a little bit. Okay, like that. And some on the other foot. Mark off two lines. And then sculpt them. And then the other side just to make it look a little bit more like birds' feet. Just going to smooth them off with the tool. If I can, on my fingers. Like that. Okay, so he's got feet, he's got eyes. So we just need to do the finishing touch around the top. And what I'm going to do is, if I bring this one across, you can see he's got like this uh, sort of, um, I don't know what you describe it as, ears maybe, around the top. So I'm going to get some clay. And I'm going to take him out of the way for a moment so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to roll it out. Again, long rolls. You'll find it goes square. Squeeze it back around and start again. Because it's not going to go round. Once it's gone square, you're battling against it. Now, the trick with this one is if you feel when you've come to do this that actually you haven't made that top section big enough, you can actually use a coil around the top to make it bigger. Mine is more than big enough, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use my coil. Like that. I'm going to cut it in half, tidy up the end, make it into a little point. Like that, on one, do the same on the other. And then I'm going to score the back of them. Slip on them and position them around the eyes. That's why I put the eyes a little bit lower, coming up onto the top of the pot there. And the same on the other side. Bring them together, like that, round over the eyes, up onto the top of the pot. I might turn that around because that's not very good. Let's just do that one again. Smooth it out a bit. Yeah. Nope, not happy. Get rid of that one. Let's have another one. Okay, let's try again. Even experts make mistakes. It's okay to acknowledge that. There we go, so take that on there. Not one minute. Like that. Okay. Press them on. Make sure they're not going anywhere. And then using this tool, I'm gonna to just join them. Necessary, tidy it up and make sure it's well and truly on the sides here by smoothing it in at the back and it goes down onto the pot and also on the inside. So, down here where it's comes into contact with the side of the pot, smooth it in, make sure it's going to stay put. Okay. Right. I do have a little bit of a gap between his eyes, so I'm actually going to put a little bit more clay in there. Couldn't do this on the, the one I made earlier because uh, I didn't have that gap, so I'm going to do that. Tap that in just to give him a little bit more. It'll be a, more of a feature on his face. That'll just finish off that eyebrow as well. I'll work that in. And so people can see you. There we go. Again, a little bit, clean my fingers off. Okay. 
Alright, so I'm gonna get in make sure I'm happy with them. Just put this bit up a little bit in the middle. little bits of faffing. There comes a point in the studio where we start to say step away from the clay. And we spend too long faffing on something. I'm just going to thin this top out a bit as well and, and open it up and it gives it a nicer look I feel. So just rubbing my finger around the inside, just stretching the clay a bit. A bit more like that. And there we go, one owl planter. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed watching our video today. Um, when this gets finished, I shall put up some finished photos of him. But uh, until then, I hope you all have a good afternoon. Take care, everyone. Bye.